Good morning, everyone. We'll get started shortly. We're just going to give a few moments for people to join us. Feel free to take a look at the platform that we have today. We do have a Q&A available for any questions, and we will be answering as we go. Yeah, we never broke 30. All right, it looks like we're holding pretty steady. We'll go ahead and get started here. So, um, Today we're going to be going over the EPS October 1 enrollment report. Um, we do have the Q&A available up in the top uh, corner and you can use that chat bubble to open up a chat and ask any questions that you may have. Right. Upcoming webinars for October, we have the EPS certification of staff next week. We will be going over that report. And then we have error logs, uh, staff resources, data security, accuracy and validity. Those are all going to be more of an open office hours. They are registration required, so please make sure that you find those registrations on the webinars link on the help desk website. Resources for today's report we can be found on the help desk website on a few different tiles. We have the EPS guides tile, which has alternate economic status form, EPS uh, reporting due dates. And then on the student enrollment guides page, we have the student enrollment guidance document, fiscal responsibility guides, home instruction guides. There are many other resources there for you to take a look at uh, when you have some unique situations for student enrollments. Then on the data reporting instructions that will go over the October 1st student enrollment count instructions document and that has the instructions for how to navigate to the report in NEO. Um, so feel free to take a look at that as well uh, to find your way to the report. October 1 enrollment collects student counts for EPS funding purposes. Um, so we are looking at economically disadvantaged students, special education counts, multilingual learner counts, and this is for attending students as well as out of district students um, who are placed elsewhere. All LEAs with publicly funded students are required to report and all students need to be enrolled in Synergy on October 1 in order to count for subsidy. We do have a couple change or a quick change for the uh, October report this year. We have auto refreshing but will continue to uh, for uncertified data. So once all once a report is certified, the data is going to be locked. But until the report is certified, data will be updating um, throughout the uh, refresh uh, time using the timer on the calendar or on the website. So you have a uh, automatic upload continuing. Um, you do not need to request a refresh um, by submitting or by clicking the refresh button. If a student is a resident of another district um, and a, a refresh of the data is done by the attending SAU, then that will decertify both of the reports um, so that any changes can be made and allow for those refreshes to happen. So just be aware um, that those will be happening um, and you may have some decertified reports that need to be recertified. Dates for this report include the reporting range of 10-1-2023, which is a Sunday this year. So that is going to be important to make sure that students are enrolled on 10-1 in order to be counted on this report. This report will open on 10-1. It will be certified. It needs to, certification will open on 10-16.
for it. So we'll be generating the report from 10-1 until 10-15. Certification will open on the 16th and will be due on the 30th of October. All data needs to flow through from your local system into state synergy in order to fuel the NEO reports. If you have any changes that need to be made on a NEO report, then that those changes need to happen in state synergy in order to be reflected on those reports. So those will all need to happen there. Um, this does include multiple uploads, including the enrollment upload, personal data, um, as well as economic status, um, special education. So you'll need to have your data in as thoroughly as possible. Enrollment dates and synergy need to overlap 10-1 uh, in order to count on this report. So we can see here that there are a few examples. So if an enrollment starts on 9-5 and it's open, uh, there's no end date, it's open over October 1, then it is going to count for subsidy. If you have an enrollment that starts on 9-5 but is exited on 9-29, um, if that student does not have an enrollment starting back up, on the first, they are not going to count for subsidy. So if a student transfers out um, before the 10-1 date, they're not going to be on your subsidy um, for this report. Same is true if a student starts on 10-2. Uh, they are not going, if their enrollment starts on 10-2, they are not going to be on your subsidy report. Uh, you can backdate it to 10-1. If you do have a situation where you have a student who's enrolled over the weekend, please reach out to the other district to determine who should get the subsidy count. The student enrollment guidance document, which is located on the student enrollment guides page. Uh, this is a small section of just this guide, but it does have some really great resources for how to enroll um, special purpose private school students, how to do foster care enrollments, various things are available here. And it will outline fiscal responsibility codes that can be used um, and many other um, elements as well. So this can be a really useful resource if you have some students who have unique situations and you need to do some um, searching on how to get them enrolled. Also on the student enrollment guides page, page is the fiscal responsibility guide and this will go over the fiscal responsibilities and how they can be used. Um, some are very specific to specific schools. Um, some are for students who are attending out of district, um, but this can go through some of those scenarios of when to use those fiscal responsibility guides. Home instruction students can be counted for subsidy, um, and so a student may attend public school on a part-time basis in order to be counted. So if a student is attending um, for a portion of the day, then they can be counted um, as 25% uh, in 25% increments, depending on how much time they're spending at the school. Um, so if a student is not attending school at all and they're not coming in for any um, academic credit, then they should not be enrolled in state synergy. They should be exited to home instruction. Uh, but if they are attending and receiving credit at the school for a per portion of the day, then they can be entered for subsidy purposes. Economic status for EPS reporting. So economically disadvantaged students for EPS reporting are students who are eligible for free and reduced meal status. So students can be um, identified as free and reduced status using either um, the alternate economic status form or they can you be um, identified using the free and reduced meal forms. Uh, we do have a list here of the different provisions that are allowable or, or that are being used by the new child nutrition team. Um, and some of them allow for collection of free and reduced meal applications. Some of them do not. Um, for EPS purposes, purposes, it is required that there is an annual collection of economic status data. And so if you cannot collect free and reduced meal applications, you will need to use the alternate economic status form in order to look for your students, uh, accommodate your students who um, you cannot collect via the free and reduced meal application.
We'll get into locating the report. So on this report, um, this is in, an, in NEO, you'll need access to student data. If you do not have access to student data, you will need to have a NEO access request form submitted by your superintendent on your behalf, and that will need to come to the help desk. Um, and we will process it as soon as possible so that we can get you in there. In NEO, you're going to go to student data, student reports, and then October 1st student enrollment. Student data, here's how we get there. So student data, student reports, and then if you, these reports are in alphabetical order, so we'll scroll down and you have October 1st student enrollment. In the report, you'll come to something that looks like this. In order to see your report, you will need to select view. And in this report, you have access to multiple different views of this report. The review will take you to where the report is certified by the superintendent. It will give you the aggregate counts. The count summary details will go into detail about students who have um, students who are accounting for subsidy um, and other elements of uh, their enrollment. The error report, this does have its own error report in NEO, and so it will go through some details about how to um, how students are counting, if they're not counting, how enrollments need uh, may need to be updated. Um, and so just something to be aware of that it does have its own error report and make sure that you're taking a look at that. Then there's the special education uh, uh, child count. That's the EFS 05 part one, which is certified by the superintendent uh, by the special education director. And so that part is going to go through all students who are on the October one um, special education report. Out of district placement report is going to go through all students who are placed out of district, um, sending schools, um, region, regional programs, um, special purpose private schools, any students who have are, are placed out of your district, but you are responsible for as they are a resident of your district, those can be found there. Attending student details or ascending attending student report is going to go through all of the students who are attending your school. So those are students that are in attendance at your district um, overall. We'll start by taking a look at the review of the report. So this is your aggregate counts of the report. There are two parts to this. One uh, part one is the special education count, child count, and part two is the October one students or count summary for subsidy allocation. The first section is aggregate counts of special education students, and this report does identify um, specific the EFS um, 05 part one that special education count. A uh, report that we saw on the previous page will go into detail about the students who are listed on this report. The top section here does need to be certified by the special education director before the superintendent can certify below. Then once they have certified, the superintendent can come in and see the, the, they'll be available to be able, be able to see all of these pieces, but aggregate counts of all students with the current school year enrollment in Synergy are included down here. The count summary details report will go into detail about each of the students who are included in this count and then the superintendent once everything looks right they can come in and they can certify here at the bottom as long as the, the special education director has certified the top section and everything looks right here at the bottom the superintendent should be free to um, certify if it's grayed out it may be that the special education director has not yet certified Count summary details report. This is a searchable report, so you can search for specific students to ensure that they're on there. You can sort this report. Um, you can export this report to send to different schools to verify that all enrollments are accounted for. Um, you can look for any students. You can send it to whoever you need to to make sure that all the data is accurate. There is a line here for counts attending. So counts attending is your students who are uh, um, attending school in your district. Some of them you may be getting subsidy for and some of them you may not. Um, if a student is paid by resident SAU, they're from ascending school. That fiscal responsibility code is going to indicate that the other school is going to be paid for it. So that's why you can see a zero there in that column um, for that student. Then we also have the counts subsidy. So these are the students that you're getting subsidy for for your um, students. So count subsidy if you're getting um, 
if you're getting subsidy for these students, they'll have a one next to their name. Then we have the error report. So this is just when you link in here, you'll have a list of students and their ID number and you'll have what their error message is. We do have a list of errors here um, and this is on the um, instructions page. So this is available for you to go to uh, to look at and determine what needs to be done for any errors that you may have pop up for this report. Then we have the special education child count. This will go into detail about all of the students who are on the uh, special education portion of the report. And the out of district placement that will be students who are attending elsewhere. It's going to go into detail about all of those students. And the attending student details report. So these are all of your students who are attending school in your SAU. So those will be listed there. A few notes about this report. Students who are aged 4 through 21 are eligible for subsidies. So those are 4 to 21 year olds will count. Um, and October 1 is a Sunday. Just a reminder that is a Sunday. Um, that does mean that your enrollments will have to start on 10-1. Um, if enrollments start on that 10-2 date, they are not going to count for subsidy. They're going to be on dropout reports. So you'll want to make sure that you're communicating with the district that was sending that student um, over the weekend to determine who should get the count for that October 1 Sunday date. We have not really had any um, questions come in, but we are going to open it up for questions here. If you have questions after today's webinar, please feel free to reach out to the help desk. 207-624-6896 um, or email medems.helpdesk at maine.gov. If you would like some training in um, Synergy, NEO, how to do enrollments, things like that, you can feel free to reach out to me. Um, my name is Alexandra Cookson and I am the data quality trainer. You can call me at 207-446-3897 or email alexandra.cookson at maine.gov. We will give it a few minutes for questions, so feel free to use that Q&A to reach out to us and ask any questions that you may have. Um, and once we start to see some numbers drop or um, not seeing many questions, we will go ahead and drop off. And um, there we go. Um, yeah, just another quick note, everybody. Um, I don't know um, how many of you, if this is your first rodeo um, with us or not, but um, you know, as always, when you're trying to sort out who uh, should have enrollments and things, or if you need students exited, just make sure you're communicating directly um, with the other districts to try to get students exited. You know, so you can pick them up or. Um, if you need concurrence entered, you should definitely be reaching out to those schools. Um, ideally, uh, we at the help desk uh, can't do too much until we get like uh, down to the wire. Um, so we, we can't just kind of fix enrollments for you guys. We're not just going to exit uh, students and that type of thing. So just make sure you're working with each other. Um, best of your ability to make it all happen. Um, we did have a question come in. Um, is there a resource that lists the non-public schools that will be on the resident district report? Um, so with that, I assume you might mean like the special purpose private schools or uh, perhaps maybe some of the out-of-state schools. Um, we we do have our infrastructure sheet that does show all the various schools with their school type so you can see who's a charter who's a private that type of thing um, that is up on our help desk website under the infrastructure tile though i believe we have a new update for that so i'll be getting um, with our warehouse person to get that updated asap but yeah we do have a general list out there um, but essentially for the 
the the resident the resident uh, report is actually going to be just any student that is a resident of your town. So if they're at any school anywhere in the state, um, a charter, a public, a private, doesn't matter. If anybody enrolls a student in Synergy and lists them as a resident of your town, then they're going to be on that report. So superintendent's agreements will show up there, that type of thing. So that's how you guys can keep track um, of all of those kind of outplacements and make sure that those other locations are enrolling your kids. Hopefully that answers it. Cole? And um, just another quick note on that, I I'm, I'm sure Ali mentioned it in training, but um, that resident district report and the out of district placement report and the attending student details, um, those are purely informational. Those have nothing to do with actual subsidy counts. Those are just there to help you guys uh, parse out what's going on, but it's only that October count summary that actually, that is where your subsidy counts come from. So the other ones are just informational. Don't forget that. They can be very useful for sending out to your schools to verify attending counts, verify resident counts, you know, contact other districts who may have your students. Uh, that, that is their purpose, um, is to be used to verify the data on those counts is accurate. Yeah. And um, one thing that we've seen since we've, with the creation of that report as well, is um, you may just see some kids that you've never heard of in your life uh, show up on there. Um, and that's probably uh, because of how easy it is to accidentally put a kid in the wrong town. You know, when you go to choose them from the drop down, oftentimes you, know, you can go one, two above or below their intended target or in an upload. You know, if one, if a digit is off, they're going to get thrown into the wrong town accidentally. So um, if you see things like that, kids you've never heard of on your reports, um, just yeah, reach out to that attending school and, you know, ask them, hey, uh, did you mean to enroll this student as a resident of our town? Uh, we've been seeing it fairly often. And OK, thanks for clarifying, Nicole. Yeah, so the thing with the private schools is not all of them actually go through the approval process with us at the DOE. So they're very well. There's a lot of them that are not going to be in synergy because they don't actually receive public funds um, for doing their education services. So those kids are all privately paid. They're all, you know, the parents or uh, whoever paying for them. They have nothing to do with the public school system. So those ones are not going to be in synergy. It's only going to be the approved ones that um, actually accept public money uh, to educate students that you're going to see in synergy. So um, and likewise in NEO, so. And unfortunately, yeah, there's, there's no way for us to uh, to give you any kind of a list. There's there's so many and uh, there's a, a reason that they don't report to us, so. Yeah, so yeah, exactly, Nicole. So if they're if they're an approved private school um, or and certainly the charters, um, the charter schools, those are very specific 11 schools that are in the state. So the charters, um, they are all funded 100% with public money. They certainly do synergy. They're required to. It's a very involved process for them. Um, so yeah, the charters certainly and then some of the privates.
Um, yeah, um, Chewankee's an approved private school. Um, so if the town is paying to send them to Chewankee, then yep, they're eligible for subsidy. Like I said, it, it depends on who's paying for the student. So if they're being paid with public funds, then the state will chip in and help you out by paying for them. Um, if mom and dad want them to go wherever and they're paying out of pocket for it, um, yeah, you guys list them as a private pay student. They're not going to be uh, eligible for subsidy. You guys will see an attending count at your school for private paid students, but um, yeah, no public subsidy money chips in for those. All right, we are not seeing any more questions coming in, so we will go ahead and um, conclude our webinar for today. Um, if anyone has any questions following today's webinar, please feel free to reach out. Um, we will be available. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. And if you are a staff reporter, we look forward to seeing you next week for EPS staff certification report. Have a great Tuesday, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks again, everybody.